My name is Carlos Ortega, and I am originally from Chihuahua, Mexico. I started there at first grade, and I went till third grade, and then I had to repeat the third grade because I got sick. There was one teacher that I had. I remember there were several times that we were in class, and uh, he would make us come in and read out loud. And whenever we would read, if there was a student that would stutter or couldn't read at a certain pace, uh, he would come to us and he would uh, hit us. There was a lot of times I would come home with uh, like missing hair here because they would pull our uh, sideburns up or the back of our hair, they would pull it up. And so that's something that I've always um, like had like this bad image of teachers in Mexico. We got here to the U.S. in August, and it was about two weeks before school started. And my cousin told me, she's like, oh, you know, don't worry about school. You know, you'll catch up because I catch up, you know, catch up. And um, just remember that when you go into class, you have to say hi. And this is how you say hi, and hi means hola, you know. And then they say, how are you? They're, actually, they're saying, como estas? So you have to say fine. I remember uh, the first day of class, uh, my mom took me there and they had a, a person that was an interpreter, but the principal was the one that was giving us a tour of the school and he wanted to see uh, how much I knew. And I remember the first question he asked was, what's your name? And I had practiced this for the past two weeks and when he asked me that, I was so lost, I was so scared. I kept looking at my cousin like, what is he saying? And she would get so mad, I'm like, oh my God. We went over this for the past two weeks. He's asking you what your name is. Just say Carlos in this. <laughs> so uh, it was it was very uh, nerve wracking. I passed fourth grade with all D's because if they would have passed me with all F's, I mean you can't pass anybody. You know you have to hold them back. But they couldn't hold me back because I had already been held back one year in Mexico. One of my favorite teachers is my fifth grade teacher. She did everything she could to get me to develop my, you know, my language a lot quicker. She would come in 40 minutes before school and she would give me lessons. And she would stay 40 minutes after school and keep giving me lessons. And she would go home, she would read books and record herself. And she would send those recordings with me at home and she would say, just listen to them and that's all you have to do, you know? And I have to say that after a year in her school, I mean her class, um, halfway through the year, I dropped my ESL program because I was learning more from her than my ESL teachers. And by the time I left fifth grade with her, I probably knew half of what I know now in English. It was my freshman year. You know, I walked in there and you could feel the students were uncomfortable. You know, I could hear them, you know, talk. Um, I felt like they thought I didn't know how to speak English and I didn't, they probably thought I didn't know what they were saying, but I did. And I could just hear like all these, I remember this word they kept repeating and I didn't know what it was and I didn't know until my senior year. Uh, they kept calling me uh, Spick. I want to be a Spanish teacher. I want to be able to go as high as possible in my education. Maybe the reason people hate on other people is because you're not communicating. So one of the things that I want to do uh, once I graduate, I want to open some kind of program where I can teach other adults, not just students, but adults that come in from other countries so I can teach them how to speak English. If we have a language, we, we can all talk and say what we, you know, we need to say to each other. I feel like that's one way of el eliminating um, all this hatred and all this confusion, you know, because um, I feel like, you know, you can't judge somebody if you don't know them. <laughs>